So listening to the amendments and the corrections and the concerns that has been raised about um, invasion of privacy and violation of human rights and uh, sneaking in through the back door of the criminal libel law and then also um, gagging free speech amongst others. Listening to Sam George on the clarity and the clarifications that he's giving you on this, uh, you still will go um, to the Supreme Court once the president has sent to it? Are you talking to me? Yes, I Jennifer. am, Professor Gadjeko. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me say that there are a lot of issues that your other guests raise. And obviously, to everybody listening and watching, you realize that you've unpaneled a panel where the majority, except me, uh, are for the passing of the bill. So there's been a lot of issues raised to support the opposition. Okay. So you have to allow me Please, you have to allow me to counter some of those positions. But first, I need to raise the mischaracterization, even though I was not named by Mr. Sam George, when he said that it has been imputed on this program that there was no transparency. I was responding to your question, and it was in a very narrow context that we have not seen the final amendment that was introduced. So you can go and review the tapes, that's what I said. And so I will not be mischaracterized in that manner. Having said that, I can understand where religious people like Sheikh Amaya would, and, and the Imam would be happy that there's a bill that speaks to their religious convictions but i cannot say it enough we are a secular state we are not a theocracy so yes we think that if we and and and, and having or identifying yourself as same sex attraction may be a sin which we can all abhor maybe a, 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 a cultural abomination to us, but it is not a crime. And we must make those distinctions. And that's why I'm saying that we need to subject it to uh, the Supreme Court for constitutional interpretation. Okay, but the clarity, if I may come in briefly, uh, Professor Gajeko, mm -hmm. at least we've heard from the lawyer on this panel, mm -hmm. even though you say that uh, the entire panel is, is anti um, or for the bill, we've, we've come to establish at least uh, from you what we've think, heard. We've heard, if I, if I could just finish, Professor, uh, we've come to agree, at least we, we've come to understand that this particular bill is an amalgamation of the existing laws that we have including the constitution so if we say that it's unconstitutional where is that emanating from you say well but i am not a lawyer and that's why it would have been great to have a lawyer who is on the side or, or who is against the bill on your panel yes I'm, really, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure i'm not sure I'm not sure the lawyer no, was speaking, the was, but, speaking but, was speaking, was speaking for the bill. For the, the law. Really, he was speaking the but law and not is, against the is. bill, Pro. My point. Mm -hmm. We are educating, Pro. We are seeking to educate the public. But I beg yes, your pardon. We are seeking to educate the public on this particular bill. So I asked the lawyer to give us the position of yeah. the law. That's what I was asking. Oh, okay. But MFA, there are other lawyers, as you know, in law. People have different opinions. That's why law is my opinion against your opinion. And we need to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's a lawyer doesn't mean that his position is necessarily correct. Is it's it a fact? subject to Is it fact from what the you've seen so far? Prof, is it so fact? Me, Prof, if I could just ask, I'm allowing you so that we can, we can move forward on let this. Is it fact? Is it fact that the law that you've seen so far, or the bill that you've seen so far, is an amalgamation of the laws, existing laws in this country? Have you seen that in that bill? It's no, question I to you, seen that. And like I said, I'm not a lawyer. But okay. I am just saying that when we go to the, uh, uh, the Supreme Court, as we have, we would have taken our time. Because right now what we've done is look at the clauses of the bill, and it suggests to us that there are lots of provisions in that bill that infringe on our constitution. Mr. Sam George talked, and it seemed very benign,
about, uh, and first of all, let me correct a misunderstanding. You talk about the criminal libel law being, uh, uh, um, there was an argument by, and his word was that the, the, the gay lobby, but it was the majority leader on the floor of the parliament, um, parliament, if you have your records right, who said that this was, in a sense, the provisions of the bill would be introducing criminal libel law. Okay. So through let's, the back let's, door. let's not no. just clearly dismiss it mm -hmm. as no. something that the gay lobby. Okay. Yes. It's very but, but, but from what you know, I from what I recall, way. if you would allow me to also give you some correction on this, at least from what I heard of Fenio Marking say in Parliament, it was the issue about incarceration and that if we ought to want to help these persons, why jail them rather than give them community service? That's what I heard the majority leader say. Unless you heard differently, ma'am. Yes, that was only one of his points. These reactions, the criminal libel law you talk about is the reaction that have come in after the passage of the bill. And I can read some to you, if you may. I don't know. There, there are people who think it's, it's, it's introducing the criminal libel law. But I am saying that even Afenio Marking made that comment. So if you don't have that, please go and look for it. I will. But let me just say that when, um, um, when uh, Mr. Sam George talked about the fact that journalists can go about uh, doing their, their work, you know, let me read two, and unless they have amended it, mm -hmm. uh, section 12, I think it is, two, A, two, a person who engages in or participates in an activity that promotes or supports A, sympathy for an act, okay, B, a change of opinion, towards the act. Now, the very nature of, um, of fundamental freedoms of the media and free expression is that we ought to be able to express public opinions uh, that we believe is part of the debate. How the, the, the uh, former Deputy Attorney General talked about now, you know, 30 years ago, we wouldn't be having certain debates. Today, we're having certain debates. Mm -hmm. And I said, even though he he, uh, he didn't quite, um, he was saying it in another context, I said, but that is a, a good principle to keep in mind. Because we cannot preclude debate. Because culture is not static. It's dynamic. We get new information that make us change positions. We're a country where there was a time where cultural values said that we should have uh, trochosis, we should have female genital mutilation, we, we are still struggling with widowhood rights, we are still struggling with people that are, are, are witches and all of that. So we have cultural practices that are not always variable to us. And, and laws have been introduced to cure these yes. particular things that you talk about. Yes. Laws have been we introduced. Yes, mm -hmm. this is my point. So, so you must allow society to continue to debate these things so that we get to positions where we can have laws that don't harm people. Okay. Do you understand? And it is, our, it is my submission and it is our position that the law that is being advocated harms people. Now, let me ask you something. And again, the, the last speaker talked about the fact that um, human rights um, are not uh, absolute. And he is right. Human rights are not absolute. But in what context are human rights not absolute? You have to ask yourself. The example he gave is that if you go to the market and you throw your hands around and you hit somebody. So you have to ask, when somebody identifies as a certain sexuality, mm. who have they harmed? Who, where is the victim in this? Where is the victim? You have a nebulous victim that says society doesn't like that. And therefore, otherwise, we will be subjected to what the majority of our society likes. And sometimes society can be on the wrong side of history simply because they don't have the facts. Now, another thing is there seems to be overwhelming support, as people are saying, for the bill. But there was very little public education about the tenants and the specifics in that bill. Okay? Mm. There was... There was a sense, and in fact, when we engage journalists, almost no journalists had even read the bill. Yet, they were, they were discussing the bill in public. Now, there are generalities 
that seem to people as common sense. Common sense that you will protect people against uh, uh, homosexuals because they, uh, it is a practice that we don't like. And even that one, the whole argument about that Mr. Sam George advances, uh, 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 and it seems very logical that, you know, if you go into our history, because Kojo is is, is, is a, a coinage, um, it, 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 it doesn't mean that we practice it. Look, I have heard people who were against the bill, but who have admitted that when you look into some of our cultural practices, there are homosexual cultural practices. Like which one? Like which one of our cultural practices? If you could educate us, which one of our cultural practices? Yes. Of 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 of, 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 of which cultures? You, well, mm -hmm. I was in a training and somebody told us that when you look in, and I just don't want to raise. Um, well, uh, we are, we are, uh, this is for educate, we are educating the public and trying to cure some of the misconceptions around this particular law. So I'm only asking which one of our cultural practices. There are practices in Ghana culture. There are practices in Ghana culture, you say. In Zimar culture, yes. Ghana and in Zimar. Which, which Ghana culture, there are practices in Zimar culture, for example, that sociologists have documented. Plus, Yes, you know, and, and, and in, in, in anecdotal discussions that we've had with people, they say, yes, we recognize those practices, okay? So, so, so we cannot glibly say that when you went around, nobody admitted to those cultural practices, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's one, but it doesn't even really matter. It matters to us that there are provisions in the bill which have implications even not just for sexual minor, okay. not minorities, but for all of that. So if okay. you have a bill that says that you cannot have oral sex, eh? you cannot ha have sex toys, it does it say only it applies to And that's to why I was asking if we have actually read the final bill. Uh, on this, whether it's still in there, and because it, it was one of the things that had been put around or bandied around in public, but whether we are able to point it exactly to, because you were the one that's talking about people not reading it, but the final bill that was passed, Prof, um, I'm wondering, yes. because we are educating at this point, really, so if we still put out what we knew back then, as against what has been passed, we are not educating the public. The final bill because I do you're have part it. Of that I do have it because you so actually I, read I, I even the 12 that you read and what I have here, it was inconsistent with it, and I didn't want to point okay. that out really. So, yeah. so, 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 which means they make amendments that we are not exactly the point I'm making. Um, so, 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 can you read to me or can you tell me that they've taken out the portions about sex toys and oral sex? Have they taken it out? Is Sam, that what you're telling? Sam George will briefly answer to that. Well, and let me just read now, it is. Plus uh, four, four. the bill. And, and even like I said, and Prof, let me just explain to you and for our viewers why you don't have the Briefly. final part of the bill. The drafting office, and this is standard practice, the former Deputy Attorney General is here. After amendments are done on the floor of the House, the drafting office goes back to incorporate all the amendments that have been done. And then the final one is what is then published and sent to the president. So this is standard practice. It is not as though anybody is being uh, 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 untransparent or not seeking to be transparent. Now, what we say in 4.3, and even with this one that I'm reading, has been amended again. But what it reads now is, for the purpose of this section, sexual intercourse occurs where a person penetrates the anus, A, penetrates the anus or mouth of another person of the same sex with the penis of that person or other device, or B, by use of an object or device, penetrates or stimulates the vagina or anus of another person of the same sex, or C, by use of the penis of the person or any other object or device, penetrates the anus, mouth or vagina, or another bodily opening of an animal, mm -hmm. or D, allows penetration of the anus, mouth, vagina, or other bodily openings of that person by an animal for sexual gratification. gratification. It is clearly spelled out there. And in fact, let me state, let me give credit to who it is due. The Honorable Osei Che Mensah Bonsu, MP for Swami, former majority leader, at the time majority leader, was the one who introduced those amendments of person of the same sex. So it's all been dealt with. Okay.
Prof, we, we, you have to unmute, Prof. I can't hear you. You have to unmute. Good. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay. Please. So thank you for that clarification and that amendment at the last minute of the bill. But it tells me that your bill is saying that if you are of the same sex, it's okay for you to have certain sexual practices, but if you are heterosexual, you shouldn't have it. You see, we have a law currently on our criminal statutes of unnatural carnal knowledge, which includes oral sex, okay? So, so are you saying that when, when it comes to these practices, it's okay for heterosexuals to do that and not uh, 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 homosexuals to do that? Okay. I am asking you. One, but, but and then, and then all, and that, those are the issues that raise questions, uh, uh, larger questions about discrimination. How you formulate laws that says it's okay for one group and not the other. Okay. okay? Okay. Uh, and that's why you said you no took child. it out. And you just said, no. Honorable uh, Chairman Sabo, she said, take it out. Make it only of the same sex. Okay. But, but coming back to the criminal libel <laughs> issues, I am still saying that, you know, uh, and I will not criminal libel, but the issues about freedom of freedom expression. Freedom of expression, yeah, uh, speech. Mm -hmm. and, and, and of the media. Let me ask Mr. Sam John, this say, today, say this. a year from now, yeah. MFR Powell decides mm -hmm. that she is going to uh, talk to people about how they've been affected by the bill. And she talks to people who tell her that the bill has been really terrible for our community. And by the way, uh, there's been a lot of talk about protecting uh, people from lynching, from insult and all of that. And it is true that that's in the bill. Yeah. But the reality on the ground, even as we speak, MFR, and you know it because you are in the media, that's true. lots of reports about lynchings just for suspecting somebody maybe of a different sexual orientation. Okay. It's happening randomly, and mm. you know that. Okay. Now, we have to ask... Prof, you agree. I've given you a lot of time on this. Maybe we can wrap up briefly on that. Then how I can... Many of mm -hmm. that how many of, uh, of those people have been prosecuted okay. by the law? We mm. are saying that the very uh, proposal of this bill unleashed a certain um, uh, attack, an assault on people of sexual minorities. Okay. And the bill has continued to do that. And you may have a provision, but the damage is already done. Okay. Mm. So we are saying, and, 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 and I am glad that, the, and I, I will say it again, even though, again, Mr. Sam George seems to suggest that the Commissioner for Human Rights and Administration doesn't know his law. I'm sure he does. I'm sure that there are very competent lawyers in the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, and this has been well considered. I am saying that we will have the Supreme Court help us help us in determining whether many tenants in this bill, if not the bill itself, itself. is unconstitutional. Okay. Well, Thank let, you. let me... Thank you very much, mm -hmm. MFA. Okay. I, I, I think that now that Parliament has passed the bill, and before the President decides whether or not to sign it into law, that there is robust public education on each provision of the bill and its implications to Ghanaians as well as to our democracy. We have sat on this uh, set and debated it from our own different positions. Of course, I differed with the majority on that panel, but I think that, uh, and I hope that maybe even NCCE would be held. This is a bill that, um, affects everybody. Okay. Mr. Sam George actually said that even though the bill says you can't have a, 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 a homosexual sex, you have to have the evidence. Uh, uh, but people may be tempted to go and peep into people's bedrooms <laughs> to get the evidence if they suspect. There are all kinds of dangers out there okay. that will fragment our society. So I am just saying that having passed this bill, mm -hmm. it, uh, there's an onus on us to provide public education 
on each and every provision of the bill and what it means to the individual and to individual liberties and to larger liberties and to our democracy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Audrey Gadjekpo.